another major dugout very large position probably they had some cannons here huge caliber as you can see so let's see if you can pull this out oh that's some firepower right there morning we're back with a brand new metal detecting adventure today i'm with the dutch relic diggers world War II artifacts and world War II unknown we're going to return to a forest where i actually found a german paratrooper helmet in the past these guys found some guns here some metals so it's a very promising location we're going to be moving a lot of sand today yeah hopefully it's going to be fruitful not sure if you can see that but there's a very clear duck out right there so there's already positions here and we're just making our way towards the location where we actually want to start so <laughs> maybe we can check those spots out later we just met up with the guys from world to artifacts so we're all together i think it's time to get the party started well jeff already had a signal and he just pulled out uh, a german rifle grenade so we got to be very careful with this stuff don't want to be touching that too much but you can clearly see this copper drive band it has been fired this one is empty yeah wow interesting there's more Oh, that's a different type. Oh, yeah. So there's a third one there. Fourth one. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the type of jackpot that we want to hit, but it is history right there, you know. I think we do still hear metal scraping down there. It's also an empty one, yeah, fired, or at least they emptied it, maybe they used the gunpowder to make fire, I don't really know why it would be empty like that, but, and some are definitely still filled. Right, so, <laughs> the pile is uh, getting bigger and bigger, I'm not sure if I already mentioned this, but so these are German rifle grenades, also called Sprengpatronen, so the, uh, the German rifle, the Mauser K98K, they put an attachment on it to fire these uh, rifle grenades. And uh, these <laughs> could do some serious damage. I have found quite some of them over the years, but never so many altogether. This is really extraordinary. Yeah. Right, so Rob just did a quick Google search and we just found out it's anti-personnel, these uh, rifle grenades. Yeah, small uh, AP, large AP, yeah. anti-personnel. Yeah, anti-personnel, interesting. So this is the attachment that I mentioned that they put on the Mauser K98K rifle and they would put the rifle grenade in there and they could fire it by using a, a blank a cartridge in the rifle. Did somebody do a final countdown or? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 31. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> 31 rifle grenades, guys. This is not a casual Sunday. So we are just putting all of the rifle grenades back in the hole now. So we're gonna save this location, report it to the authorities and they will make sure that this is uh, disposed of in a careful way. Today's video is sponsored by Revolution Race. If I may take a short moment of your time, I'd like to tell you a bit more about the perfect clothing for my favorite outdoor activity, metal detecting. I have worn quite some outdoor clothing that just didn't live up to the standard I needed. That changes right now with Revolution Race. My metal detecting companions actually advised me to get my hands on these products and I finally did. I'm currently trying out these hiking trousers, this very neat hoodie and a cyclone jacket. And it's called that for a reason. It's waterproof, windproof and extremely breathable. The jacket even has additional zippers to make sure the clothing ventilates better. Perfect for warm conditions. What I really like about the trousers is that I can insert knee pads and that is great for when I'm digging on my knees all days. When the conditions are cold, this hoodie will be perfect to keep me warm and comfortable outside. Also, it just looks good, doesn't it? Now, where do you get your hands on these products? Simply click the link in my description and apply the code MDBattlegrounds15 to get 15% discount. Be quick, as it's only valid for 5 days. So, big thank you to Revolution Race for setting me up with this gear. Let's get back to metal detecting. These are the fine moments again. As you can see, everybody is lined up. This is the reason why. I was basically walking over this forest trail 
And uh, me and Rob were complaining about shrapnel. Rob told me if you get a 77 signal, you probably better dig. So that's what I did. I actually got a 77 signal. And look what I see there, down here. Well, I must say, I do think that this is a dial buckle. Maybe it's something else, but I do see quite a clear pattern on there. So it, it, at least it's gonna be something interesting. So let's excavate this together and find out what it is. Got my grass knife. Let's see if you can expose this very carefully. There's some movement there. Yeah. I do think it's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's for sure a bell buckle, yeah, 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 okay. Now it's just a question of what sort of symbol is on there, if there is even a symbol. I think we already picked that up. Yes, we got a bell buckle, but for what department of the Wehrmacht? I think this is gonna be an extraordinary one, special one. So we don't recognize this one immediately. Maybe it's older, maybe even from World War One. But we can Google search this later on for sure and find out what type of bell buckle it exactly is. All right, so we think we see a German helmet there in the middle, or it's a fireman's helmet and an X. So maybe it's like fire brigade. Yeah, we're gonna do our research and uh, find out exactly what type of bell buckle this is. Okay guys, it is a World War II belt buckle after all. It's World War II firefighters belt buckle. <laughs> that explains why I've never seen it. That's, that's special for sure. I've never seen that in all those years. So we got a World War II uh, grass belt buckle from the German fire brigade. How awesome yeah. is that? <laughs> well, that is that is a banger. My, my days my day is already very good and we just started up, so. There we go. God zur Eer, it says. Um, in the honor of God, I think that means. And then it says, demnächsten zur Weer. I'm not sure what that means, actually. Like the next one to to, to defend, to protect. Something like that. Well, it was the fire brigade, you know, so that is an awesome belt buckle. All right, so we just moved locations. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's some sort of a valley going on here. And in this valley, we spotted a lot of blown up bunkers. I think they were ammunition bunkers. And we just threw down our bags here, decided to give it a try. And one meter next to the bags, I got a very deep, loud iron signal. And all the way down there, Look at that thing, <laughs> that is freaking huge. I found this, I think it's a shell casing. Huge caliber as you can see. So let's see if you can pull this out. Not sure if I can do that with one hand, but no, I'm not gonna be able to do that with one hand. Look at how huge that thing is. Yeah, it's definitely a shell casing. Let me put some sunlight in there. There we go. So the primer is gone, it's definitely fired. And I've never found such a large one. Not sure if you can read anything on here, but. So probably this one was fired by a Feldhaubitze or something like that, or a, or a German Puck uh, gun. Not sure which one exactly, but <laughs> it's one of the bigger ones I've found for sure. This shell casing originates from the 15 centimeter Schwere Feldhaubitze 18. It was the basic German division level heavy howitzer of World War II. Its mobility, firing range of 4.5 kilometers, and effectiveness of the 44 kilogram shell made it the most important weapon of all German infantry divisions. Almost 7,000 pieces in total were produced. Right, let's go find my friends. They just shouted that they found another one of those huge casings. Those uh, fired by uh, field cannons. So let's see exactly what they have there. And as you can see, they're digging in a, another major dugout. Very large position. Probably they had some cannons here or they used these shelters for ammo storage. Now that is a familiar sight, isn't it? <laughs> yep, that's definitely another one. Looks identical. The primer here isn't gone. And there's more. Does sound like that? Yep. That's one. promising. Yeah, there's another one. Are you sure you're the helmet man, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's a helmet. Next one. Yeah, so that's the third one. I think that's a nice score. <laughs> well, that's some firepower right there. There definitely something went on here. 
Maybe they had some sort of battery here. I mean, we've seen multiple bunkers probably. There were a lot of field cannons here. Just to give you a small overview, there in the back you can see my friends digging in that dugout where they just found two of those casings. And let me see. That's where our bags are at, where I just found one of those casings. And on the other side of this valley, right here where I'm standing, you can see all of these bits of blown up concrete. And there's metal bits in there as well. This definitely was a bunker and I'm guessing this was ammunition storage. Maybe we can even see under there. Let's see if we can make our way there. Well, this was for sure a bunker, not much is left, but it's an interesting find. Well, these bunkers and field cannons, they were definitely well hidden. I mean, you can see this valley over here. There is a forced edge as well over there. And on the other side of the valley, there's also a forced edge. And you can see this depression here, so very strategic location. Not far away from that blown up bunker that I just showed you. I got a very loud signal and I just put my shovel in the ground. And look what pops up. That's a uh, Lee Enfield clip, British 303 ammunition. You can still see some sort of cardboard or parchment paper wrapped around this. It's very interesting to find it like this. So it's two clips. It's a very nice condition still. But yeah, this is live, so I'm not gonna be taking this with us, but nevertheless, it's definitely a cool piece of history to find. Well, as you can hear, there is more. So I thought, let's do this as a live dig. Probably there's gonna be more Lee Enfield clips there, but it's going off here. Oh yeah, well, it's more than one. So here's one. There's another one. I think this is it. And right next to yet another beautiful dugout, Ray just called me over, found some porcelain pieces, but more importantly, we found this very neat knife. I think it has Bakelite grips. And look at the markings on there. We're in Germany, guys, on the Western Front. And what does this say? Sheffield, England. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that's definitely clear trace of the, uh, the British Army that made their way through this gorge, through this valley. So probably these uh, British soldiers sat down here, made themselves a peanut butter jelly sandwich, had a cup of tea, and, you know, went about their day, I guess. Right, second day of this adventure. It's just me and Jeff now. Brand new day. Let's get going. Jeff over there just shouted that he got a dog tag. I couldn't believe it, so I just grabbed my camera and... Yeah, man. <laughs> it's a complete one, man. A German soldier carried this around his neck for years, you know. It's super personal. It has his registration number. The German dog tags usually didn't put names on it, but I am really curious what, what sort of inscription is there. So we should probably brush it up. I think this is a yeah. zinc version, right? Yeah, it is. All right, let's clean it with some water. Let's see if we can make it readable. Let me see. It says FL, maybe that means Fliege, uh, like a Luftwaffe Air Force related. Yeah, congratulations with this one, man. That's a beauty of find. It's clear that the uh, evidence of the World War II history is still present. And uh, the German soldiers had a really nice view here, as you can see. What did you just say it was? What did you find? It means Flugplatz Commando. Flugplatz Commando, so like um, airfield commander. Or yeah. So yeah, it's an Air Force related Luftwaffe dog tank. All right, let's uh, give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. That's where we dropped our bags. Right there in that foxhole is where Jeff found that German dog tank. And down here, let's go down this hill, right along this dike. I had a very high signal right over there. And I just dug up this uh, German gas mask filter and I think it's in a pretty good condition. We sh should be able to maybe brush it up a little bit. So this was like in between the, let's say the piece that went around the face and the actual carbon filter. Maybe they, uh, they use this dike for cover. These, all of the foxholes are lined up on this dike, looking uh, at that field. Let's see what's more to be found here. All right, we moved a little bit and Jeff told me to follow him because he found some goodies here. And that right there is a German shovel, Pioneer shovel, right? Yeah. Yes. Very typical. Some the Enfield clips. <laughs> Are those clips? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow, that's all rusted together. Man, look at that. Yeah, and there as well, 
like ammo packages, right? Two clips in one package. Yeah, nice stuff. And that shovel, that shovel is not bad. Wow. It's a nice find. It will probably take a while to dig a foxhole with that one, but... Uh, <laughs> and now the best bit. Yeah, is that close as well? Yeah. All right, let's follow Jeff a little bit further. Ah, I see some stuff there in the ditch. He told me that he thinks he found a gas mask, a complete one. So oh yeah, I see, I see the fabric there. Yeah, that's definitely a gas mask, man. You can see the eye here, that round part. Let me just grab my other camera real quick. There we go. Wow, I'm hoping for you that the condition is is nice still. Let's uh, let's try to expose that carefully. Anticipation is building, but we're getting there. Nice. Oh, there we go. Wow. That's a really, really nice condition, man. <laughs> Look at the paint. Yeah, there's, there's, I must say, there's more paint on the part that I just found. I was trying to explain this to you. I found this part, and it's attached to the, uh, to the actual mask. And <laughs> there's just green paint everywhere that's almost uncorroded. And the eyes are still in there. <laughs> That's one of the better ones I've ever seen being found, I must say. And this was not even protected by the canister. It doesn't even need any, any brushing almost. No. <laughs> Got a very deep signal over here. As you can hear. There is definitely something there. Quite a big object, I believe. I need to catch my breath again in the ditch. A little bit further than where Jeff just found the gas mask. Let me just point that out to you. There in the back, in the ditch, is where Jeff found the uh, German gas mask. And I just showed you that I was taking a very deep signal. And finally, I'm hitting the object over there. And the first thing I notice is a red color. And it has a bit of a roundish shape. I think there's even a piece of leather here, there. Can you see that? Uh, I, think, I think we're quite safe that it is a German canteen, but we're gonna, we're gonna see. Yeah, I think we should be careful with the leather. Oh, look at that leather. This is going to be a nice one, guys. But there's also fabric around this thing. So the red paint is actually under the fabric. So we don't want to like fully brush it off to ruin all of that fine fabric. So we're just going to see if we can get the canteen out right now. And there we go. There we go. Oh, very nice. Look wow. at that condition. There's the leather part is moving. Let's put that to the side. Yeah, this is all the original cloth, the fabric that was wrapped around it. There's more leather there, more cloth. Wow, that red paint, man. Yeah, I think the fabric will be uh, hard to, uh, to salvage, but there is a really nice present underneath. That's that red paint. Although it would be nice to preserve some parts of that fabric. See if we can make this part a little bit cleaner. Well, I am really happy with this one. <laughs> was not expecting that. German, uh, German canteen, late war model. Right next to where we just found that German canteen, I found something that I've never found before. And I'm wondering actually what it's doing here. But look at look at this. What does that look like? I think that this is an alarm clock. I mean, probably the time was important back then. They were probably looking at their watch all the time. So maybe having an alarm clock here, it's not such a bad idea to know when an attack or something was starting, you know? Jeff just pointed out that there's writing there part of a clock. You see that, those numbers there? So it's definitely an alarm clock. Cool. Let's run over to Jeff again. He shouted, Lee Enfield Scabbard. And there you can see it, yeah. Ah, that's a nice one, man. We found some of those over the years. They're always cool to find. Everything bayonet or bayonet related, in my opinion, is cool to find. So this would move over the spike like that and protect the, uh, protect the bayonet. It's a nice piece. The day is over, we're losing light. We have to get back home. Thank you all for watching, especially my patrons. If you haven't checked out my Patreon yet, go and check it out. There's a lot of exclusive material that you can enjoy. So see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Take care. <laughs>